to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. We did it. We made it to December. Oh, man, I thought you were going to say we made it through that game. <laughs> well, that too. I mean, that was its own <laughs> endeavor, <laughs> journey, venture. <laughs> uh, I did hear some rumors that the Eagles were pursuing Kendall Hinton after the <laughs> game. There's some interest on both sides for an acquisition. Well, I think based on what we saw this last week, Kendall Hinton is a clear upgrade for oh, the Eagles. Oh, man. And you also have uh, the fact that he comes very cheap. He's a practice squad wide receiver, so very affordable. And considering that um, even next year in the 2021 season, Carson Wentz carries a dead cap of $59 million. <laughs> That's uh, ooh. <laughs> Sorry, Eagles fans. <laughs> Last night was, to me, when I watched that game, I know it's many things and I want to hear your thoughts. It was a game plan built for a fledgling rookie quarterback that needs to be protected from himself. And uh, I believe there were 17 pass completions to non-wide receivers in that game, maybe more. Boston Scott, Dallas Goddard, Richard Rodgers, Miles Sanders. I believe Fulgham had two catches and led the wide receiving core. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have to imagine that what Carson Wentz was saying to himself or what the coaches were saying to Wentz was, don't throw it anywhere a cornerback is because oh. your ball is so bad. Only throw it against <laughs> linebackers. They you throw might a bad not ball, intercept bro. you. I mean, <laughs> goodness. he uh, Look, I, 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 you know, Mike has always been the – I, I don't really believe in Carson Wentz. I've been on the other side. I, I've I've many times in the past thought genuinely Carson Wentz was a great quarterback. I mean, he he was an MVP candidate and took his team to the Super Bowl. Granted, uh, you know, did not play in the Super Bowl, but um, I I I don't know what's happened. But it's clearly like we said, it's an above the beard injury where he is shell shocked and fearful and. You, you just hope that maybe with an off-season upcoming, he can come back next year less fretful in the pocket. Well, I think part of the above-the-beard problem is his coach has lined his cap with mercury and he has become a mad hatter. I don't know what the crap Doug Peterson is doing. Like you said, Andy, that game plan, I mean, your Miles Sanders might be their best player, and you're giving him six carries. You're giving him just two. He's got had two receptions. I mean, I I don't know what that was all about. You had all the whispers of they're gonna use Jalen Hurts. They've got drives lined up for Jalen Hurts. Then they force Hurts into the game. There's a false start. He throws a pass. It's completed, and then they take Hurts off the field. Like, what was the point of that? What did that accomplish? It, that was absolutely one of the, nothing. That was one of the weirdest things I had seen <laughs> because they, they took Wentz off the field for that for the first time this season. It was like, this is now we're going to see what Hurts can do. And to that point in the game, Wentz said, I don't believe even completed a pass. They hadn't gotten Correct. any positive yardage at all. And all of a sudden, you know, his first pass, Jalen Hurts completes it. They move the ball. <laughs> it was and the it's spark. Like, oh, that's the spark we needed to get Wentz back in there to take that sack, <laughs> which he did on the following play. Seahawks won the game 23-17. to 17. Uh, Chris Carson made the return, only eight carries, but ended up with a touchdown, probably managing his <laughs> workload a little bit. Yeah, and, Carlos Hyde was actually the primary running back. He had and 15 then, carries. And then DK Metcalf, I mean, this is a conversation too. Oh, Metcalf was 10 for 177. He just missed a touchdown on his 52-yard catch. But here we are with, uh, you know, shenanigans from Russell Wilson and T Tyler Lockett for back-to-back -back years here where, look, Lockett has not been reliable or consistent since that hot start. Are you – do you have any, like, reaction to that? I mean, is he just locked in rest of season no matter what? I I can't imagine not starting him 
but I totally understand. I mean, you, you know, you look at the last two previous games to this one. He had nine targets in each of those games. He was a, he was a wide receiver one last week. You, you have to play him in order to get the big games. And right. there's just not many players out there that have the potential to be the number one wide receiver on the week. He's done it twice this year. So I, I totally agree. And, I mean, you know, I would never continue to fight that uh, Lockett is the one. DK Metcalf is the yes. one on this team, and he is – a dominant force uh, that you know the the NFL will be trying to reckon with for years, but at the same time, Lockett is an integral part. And remember, he was he was also a little bit banged up this last week in practice. Um, you know, somewhat questionable for this game. So the fact that his utilization, he wasn't really, uh, you know, the ball wasn't going his way as often as as usual. More David Moore involved. Um, I, I think you'll see see better days for Lockett ahead. It's like it's it's DJ Moore. Tyler Lockett is having DJ Moore's season, except he started really hot. So you had that false sense of confidence that oh, well, these first three games, this is Tyler Lockett. This is what the Seattle Seahawks are going to be for the remainder of the year. Russ is going to be a gourmet chef cooking the entire season, and unfortunately, that is not the case. But I, I'm with Jason that you you play him on a week in and week out basis. You just have to. If you haven't already adjusted what you believe the title locket is for your team, heading into the playoffs, you might want to make those uh, th those mental adjustments. Weeks one through eight, <clears throat> Russell Wilson's averaging was averaging 307 passing yards per game and 3.7 touchdowns. Weeks nine through 12, he's averaging 266 and 1.3. So you're not getting uh, cooking Russell Wilson yet either. And then with uh, Carlos Hyde, 15 for 22, by the way. Primary ball carrier, 15 Gross. for 22. Carson was 8 for 41, had the touchdown. His workload should increase. What do you do as a fantasy football player with any bit of this Eagles offense? We'll leave it there. Uh, you, you play him. I'm playing Chris Carson moving forward. I it, To me, this was a workload management thing, but you're uh, – just, just watch. well, the e eagle side, Mike. Eagles. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I heard Seahawks. I heard a bird, and then we we'll move forward from there. Close <laughs> enough. Close enough. Uh, but with, what about like Miles Sanders and the fact that his you, his you snap counts him. have gone down every week, and and any of the wide receiving core? The, the I don't wide think you play the wide. You got to abandon, abandon ship. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I keep, I keep waiting for talent to win out the wide receiver core. It, it's not going to happen because they've got a, a genuine and major quarterback problem. Obviously, Goddard's been uh, great these last couple of weeks. Um, Miles Sanders, though, you, you're going to you're going to continue to play. He is too talented, and I, I don't expect him to get six carries next week just because he got six carries this week. He's he's still involved and uh, gets the dump offs. So I, you know, you're going to continue with him in your the, lineup. Uh, the addition of Carlos Dunlap to this Seattle Seahawks defense like we haven't really highlighted him on the uh on this podcast because you know we, we don't often talk about defenders like that but Seattle's they're they've improved they have improved on the defensive side of the ball a lot they're they're actually able to generate pressure and get to the quarterback now and look man it's Seattle's the the schedule for the DST moving into the fantasy playoffs has been juicy and you just thought there's no way I can play this defense in in those type of matchups, but I think you have to consider it now. Well, they've had two here, good here, weeks. Go ahead, Jason. They've had two good weeks in a row. Um, n n no touchdown, uh, DST scoring, but but solid weeks against Arizona and Philadelphia. And now you've got the Giants with a backup quarterback, the Jets with a backup team, and <laughs> the Washington Football Team um, as the next yeah. three matchups. I, I I do agree. I think you can continue to stream Seattle. And I, I, I'm going to say this, just my opinion. I don't think Miles Sanders is a guaranteed start. I think if you do that, you are, uh, you're doing it on the basis of what you hoped he would be this year, not on the basis of reality right now. I think if you have other options for Miles Sanders, that you don't need to feel guilty putting him on your bench. A lot of the connection is between, you know, this is a running back who's sharing some of the backfield snaps on an offense that is as inept as any in football. I think they had gone something like 20 drives and scored one touchdown at some point in time. And that just lowers your probability of success at the position. And I think that there are some players 
uh, right now where I've seen the reaction on Twitter. Some people feel more confident putting Frank Gore into their lineup than Miles Sanders, who's put up, you know, uh, seven points and five points. I just don't think it's outlandish uh, because it, it's not a good offense right now. And you've got Green Bay and New Orleans these next two weeks. Yeah, exactly. You have Green Bay. Yeah, that's I know. phenomenal. Um, New Orleans, not so much. I, I think it's just a matter of what you have. When I say you're going to start him, it's because I assume that he's, you know, there's not a better option out there. If you're, you know, if you're looking at your last running back spot and you're between a Miles Sanders and a Kareem Hunt, sure, yeah, you can you can pivot because of the bad offense. But like for instance, today's a waiver wire show. I don't think there's a waiver wire running back out there uh, that I would put in my lineup over the hope in Miles Sanders. You know, Jamal Williams or Damian Harris or Latavius Murray. Some of the people we'll be talking about, James White. Those are those are who you're going to be deciding, and I would end up on the Miles Sanders side of those. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And I, I think it's more players like David Montgomery or, uh, sure. you know, Kenyon Drake had been benched by people in the past, stuff like that. Yeah, 20 opportunities, averaging 20 opportunities the previous two games. I know the snaps say they're going down, but his opportunity is still sky high, except for the game against Seattle. All right, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. All right, the uh, ever Do we changing... have the circus music to play here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, we have Ravens-Steelers Wednesday night football. It's been moved again. Uh, now, apparently, both J.K. Dobbins and Mark Ingram are eligible to play. The team is not officially reported, but this could throw a wrench in anybody who... I mean, imagine you picked up Gus Edwards to play him last Thursday. The game has now been moved to Wednesday of this week, which has That's had a, a kick in the face, a trickle down effect of, uh, and, and at this point, like a lot of leagues put into effect COVID stipulations where if this game doesn't happen, you can pivot to this player, but the game's probably going to happen. And if you put Gus in there and you expected oh. him to be oh. your running back, you have to live with Gus now. Oh, yeah, you don't JK have a pivot Dobbins. option unless you can go get Benny Snell or you can. I, I mean, are you playing Anthony McFarlane over Gus Edwards with all three of them there? Probably not. But maybe you do. I maybe. don't. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think you might against this uh, Steelers front. But um, yeah, it's it's very interesting. And the game is not in prime time. It is in the afternoon. Oh, uh, Thursday afternoon football dot com. That's right. Wednesday afternoon football. Dot com uh, is when this game is going to be played. We don't we don't have that domain yet, do we? We do have that yeah. domain. A, a, a Foot Clan member came through, got it, and forwarded it to the Wait, Fantasy Wednesday afternoon football. Wednesday yeah, afternoon com. football. Dot com. No, they did it's not. Ours, baby. They did. Yeah. 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 Oh, if we can man, figure the out the Clan. person's name, I would shout him out. Oh, the, the, the Foot goodness. Clan is amazing. Oh my goodness, that is hilarious. And it had a trickle down effect. Steelers Washington moved to Monday. Of next week, Ravens Cowboys move to Tuesday, so we do get TuesdayNightFootball.com next week, and uh, I think Gotta the game's going to happen. Squeeze the juice out though. of that domain. Shout yeah. out to Nick. Nick. Nick handled it. Thank Way you, to sir. go! Yeah, uh, I did forget a couple of announcements at the top. I'll get back into the news, but we did pick our uh, hashtag Mega Done winner. Which thank you everybody who tweeted that hashtag that made it through the Megalodon. All of the feedback on the Megalodon was amazing, as always. I'm glad you guys look forward to it. And Bo, Bo L, won uh, the gift card for Mega Dunn. And then we also picked our Kenny Galladay signed jersey winner, Justin H. Justin H, congratulations. Mm. Like uh, just maybe in H? Like just in H? Right. Just, just an H. and H, yes. Yeah, that's mm. his name. His parents went with that uh, single digit name. So It's like Brooks. Uh, Brooks' middle name. Oh, yeah. What C. is your middle name again, Brooks? The letter C. Okay. Just, now, do you just, pronounce just that? Do you pronounce that? K or do you, or do you go like a? S right. Approximately or, how many times have a, people asked you what the C stands for? Is the C silent? A lot of times. A lot of <laughs> the times. The C is silent. <laughs> the C is silent. Uh, I, I might have made it easier on you. Um, <laughs> all right. This was huge news yesterday. I am devastated. Uh, by oh. this news it does it just seems like we've got enough going on why would this have to take place mm. the flying v himself will fuller mm. p 
Bill Fuller has been suspended oh, six, six games oh, 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 for no. a PED violation. And uh, let me let me let me tell you, uh, he did it. He's not innocent. Um, because Correct. if you're innocent, you 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 go ahead and appeal a six game suspension. You don't take responsibility instantly on social media. And now Will Fuller is out. Uh, we spent forever on yesterday's show talking about what he means to Deshaun Watson. Will Fuller is the wide receiver four on the year. He was uh, my sweet, sweet darling in my dynasty league. And now heading into the playoffs, he is done for the season. The yeah, Reaper the, uh, does what the Reaper does, man. <laughs> oh, come uh, on. So yesterday uh, I was with my son. And so uh, my, my son's playing fantasy football for the first time this year. I'm co-managing with him. Our team is dominating. Uh, we have the most points in our footballers family league. We have locked up the bye week, and he is, you know, huffing and puffing his chest about how we got the bye week. We're winning the championship. I'm like, dude, we are a long way. Stay from humble. A yeah, just just pump the brakes, and then a couple hours later, we lose Will Fuller, and I'm like, dude, remember when I told you to uh, take it easy? We've got a big problem now. Yeah, you never presume the future in fantasy, that's for sure. And now Will Fuller is out. Uh, implications here for fantasy, I, I thought through this. I mean, obviously, Brandon Cooks is the wide receiver one for this team moving forward and is a locked and loaded every week start. Beyond that, you now have the reemergence of Kiki QT as kind of the second option in this offense. But I know Deshaun Watson. I've watched him play football for a long time, and one thing he really – is comfortable doing is leaning on the tight end position as well. So Jordan sure. Akins is somebody that I'm looking at. He's at the top of the list. I know we've had Darren Fells weeks earlier in the season. He's kind of trickled down the the, the depth chart. Um, I'm looking at Jordan Akins, uh, certainly. And, you know, at this point in time, you know, you have Randall Cobb hurt and we're moving forward without Will Fuller. So it takes the ceiling down for Deshaun Watson, unfortunately. Not just the ceiling. I mean, we had already, in our playoff primer, You, the Texans were highlighted. And it was, what do you do with Deshaun Watson uh, worrying about the playoffs? Now, then, when we, since we were talking about that, Will Fuller really caught fire. Brandon Cooks jumped in those flames as well. So it was, oh, well, we're not going to worry about Deshaun Watson. But on the road against Chicago, that's the playoffs week one in, in week 14. Then on the road against the Colts, the next week, I mean, that's that, this. Yeah, without sucks, Will man. Fuller, this sucks a lot. And no Hopkins, that's not good. Yeah, and mm. I, I do think Akins is going to be the biggest beneficiary. Genuinely, he had two. It's kind of a, a one of those things you don't see if you look at the stats. But if you watch that game, he had two end zone opportunities. He dropped a touchdown. He had one ball that was just barely misthrown, but he had a chance for two touchdowns in that game. They're going to have to throw the ball somewhere, and uh, you know. I think some would love to say, okay, now Duke Johnson's going to get involved or David Johnson, and that, and that might be true. If David Johnson gets back from the concussion, he could be a beneficiary in the past game as well. But unfortunate breaking news. It's essentially a season-ending injury of sorts for your team. And, it, and he's going to miss a – he'll miss a game next year too. Yeah. So, he, I mean, he's going into the, the offseason looking for a contract knowing that he will miss week one. Yeah, but there is better news. It's not all bad news. Continue on, Andy. We've got a run of good news. Yes, Dalvin Cook, not expected to miss any time due to the ankle injury he suffered on okay. Sunday. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Josh Jacobs, confident he can play on Sunday. Okay. okay. All, All right. right. All right. Panthers coach Matt Rule said DJ Moore's ankle x-rays were negative. I what? have no idea how that's possible. That but seems that's crazy. They, need, they didn't x-ray the knee. They needed to x-ray the knee. <laughs> right. They I, did the did. wrong body part. I, I tell you, man, I've watched this play, and I don't understand how his ankle got hurt. It's all <laughs> in the knee, but hey, Not x-rays are negative. They're on their bye week. Maybe he's back right away. That could be big news. And then uh, Julian Edelman. Oh, wait, this isn't good news. He's no, I, we're done with the good news. Reserve part. COVID list. Not now, that anybody could have played him when he came back. So he's on. He's on two reserved lists now. Uh, so many re Mr. Reservation here. He's Don't on IR and Edelman COVID. What he yeah. can't do. <laughs> they oh, said it couldn't be done. Yeah, they, they, the, the injuries just stacked up and the age and all of that. I, I think Edelman's fantasy relevant days are, are gone. Uh, and then the Broncos, hey, good news. They got they have their quarterbacks back. The quarterback room has been returned. Hmm. Drew Locke, Blake Bortles, Brett Rippon. Uh, they all tested negative, been cleared to return to the team. 
Uh, they will now all be staying in separate bubbles uh, from one another after that experience. So um, any other news that we need to get into here? No, I think that's going to do it. Before we get into the waiver wire, this episode of the Fantasy Footballers is brought to you by Head & Shoulders, available at Walmart. This year we're doing a new segment every Thursday. We're going to be picking up our, our picking hour up to 100 players of the week. We're, we're trying to dive a little bit deeper. Maybe you're desperate for a flex play, and we're looking for guys that might be on your waiver wire. Uh, it's tough, and it's tough to take your shots on here, uh, but when you when you get that player who goes up to 100, it is a sweet, sweet victory this past week. I had Cole Beasley, who mm. bailed me out <laughs> when he threw a touchdown pass. Uh, and uh, Cole Beasley, I like him moving forward. Uh, I think that it was that was a kind of a strange game, but I, with John Brown being on IR, Cole Beasley is going to get more targets. But but Gabe Davis in Buffalo is I I'm, we'll be talking about him as well in the waiver wire. But if you want to try and take your hair up to one hundred like Cole Beasley, my man did when he <laughs> threw a touchdown pass, uh, you could take your hair up to one hundred with Head and Shoulders available at Walmart. Pick yours up today and check out this Thursday's episode to hear our up to one hundred picks of this week. And Foot Clan, are you an Amazon Prime member? Of course you of course, are. Because of course you everyone are. Everyone is or should be. But did you know you can watch NFL football live on Prime Video? It is the future of football. And this week, instead of a Thursday night game, because of all the, the changes in the schedule, you can watch the Dallas Cowboys at the Baltimore Ravens this coming Tuesday, December 8th. You can catch it on almost any device, almost anywhere in the world. You get to choose the announcer. You want Troy Aikman, Joe Buck? You got it. You want Bucky Brooks and Daniel Jeremiah? No oh, problem. You, you got it. You prefer Chris Long and Kerry Champion oh. from NFL Next? Boom, it's yours. You get the next-gen stats. You can watch in-game replays on demand, all with Prime Video's X-Ray. Again, that's the Cowboys and the Ravens this Tuesday. Kickoff is 8 p.m. Eastern on Prime Video. It is awesome. It's the future of football, the way to watch. It's also available on Fox and the NFL Network. NFL Network simulcast is subject to change and presented by Bud Light Platinum. Put me in, coach. All right, waiver time. And we do have bye weeks this week. They're back. Uh, the Buccaneers and the Panthers. <laughs> What are they doing, man? Heading to the week 13. And, you know, just a little knife twist is losing Will Fuller. I'm looking at my dynasty team. I'm like, oh, well, I'll just put Robbie Anderson into that wide receiver starting spot. And we've got a bye week this week. Uh, Mm. Same goes for any of those Buccaneers wide receivers that you've been taking your shots at. But That's you facing Brooks in a divisional winner gets the division and the bye week. Oh, and the bye week. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm thinking this PED thing is directly correlated to Brooks. Brooks did something. Uh, exchange some of that gold bullion he keeps hiding away <laughs> in in an effort to maybe. Have you been sending supplements to Will Fuller? Is I that what's n- going on? I do not appreciate these accusations. Okay, the judge, <laughs> but he yeah, did he, not deny them. The judge is above board <laughs> at all times. He just doesn't appreciate them. <laughs> hey, try this. Try this. It's approved. Uh, but approved yeah, by so, Brooks. Well, and another wide receiver that I certainly won't be starting against you, Brooks, is. One of the top drop candidates from Twitter and Instagram, Travis Fulgham. Uh, we just talked about it, but Fulgham, Rager, you can uh, you can move on. You you don't need to yeah. put them into your lineup. And then Tyler Boyd is another drop candidate. Mm. I don't know if I drop Tyler Boyd no. because he is like uh, Sterling Shepard or something, where you can kind of keep him on your bench if it's an emergency. Like I don't know, the wide receiver four goes out for the year you can slide them in there, and I'd feel more confident with Boyd than any of the Eagles wide receivers. I I would agree there, but I mean, this is where we take a look and say, are there players on the waiver wires uh, that are available that you would be willing to drop Boyd for, for instance? What if Debo Samuel is out there and available? He's available in about half of leagues right now. Uh, Obviously was very involved this past week. Uh, and, and, and every week they manufacture touches for these wide receivers who are hybrid wide receiver running back options. Um, would you, you drop Tyler Boyd for Debo? 100%. I, I, Debo's Debo a is must a, add. Yeah. Debo's a must add. Debo's a must start for me. I mean, he's going to take on Buffalo and, uh, and, and in the, in the playoffs, Debo will be playing Washington, Dallas, Arizona. And the way that they use Debo, 
kind of highlighted this yesterday. The matchups don't concern me because they just they do tap passes, they do handoffs, they don't try to get Debo down the field before letting Nick Mullins get him the ball. Yeah, he's he's just so heavily involved in this offense when he's healthy, and he he was immediately the wide receiver nine on the week. He is a spend uh, legitimately. If you have a need yeah, to start somebody, it. I would spend all the fab yep. I have to acquire Debo Samuel. Agreed. Uh, I do not feel that way about a couple of other rookies that are candidates for pickup. Mike mentioned one earlier, Gabriel Davis, and then there's Michael Pittman. Uh, I I do like Gabriel Davis. He's made plays this year, but we have seen this team without John Brown at times. This past week, Gabriel Davis had a nice week, four targets, three for 79 and a touchdown. That being said, the touchdown did come from Cole Beasley. And he will be involved, but I am not as enthusiastic to spend up on Pittman and Gabriel Davis just because I don't think I can rely on their uh, the way that the team is focusing their offense. I think Gabriel Davis can be a product of a uh, you know a second or third read, a big play, but I don't think either offense is building around Davis or Pittman, and that concerns me. I'd much rather go with Cole Beasley again, even though he didn't have a huge game. Yeah, I, I agree. I would rather have Cole than Gabriel Davis. The nice thing is if you're going after Davis, it's someone that you can start that you don't have to spend up for. Maybe maybe you've already spent all of your fab money and you're looking at who will go through the waivers unclaimed and I can get for free. I, th I think Gabriel Davis is probably the, the most realistic unclaimed. Him and Tim Patrick are the two that I think can go through waivers completely unclaimed and you could get them for free. Gabe Davis, I would the the thing to highlight is in the three games without John Brown, averaging over five targets a game, nearly fifty yards in those matchups, and John Brown won't be back. John Brown is on IR. Yeah, absolutely, and and like I said, I mean, he he could have a good game because Michael Pittman's going to have another good game or two over the course of the year. But mm -hmm. heading into the playoffs, I just feel I feel nervous about uh, sliding him into my lineup when I have other options. I'd rather play like Jason said, Tim Patrick. Now that quarterbacks are a part of the Denver offense again uh Alan Lazard is uh, now what interesting what let's talk about Lazard because I I remember he got hurt in that game watching yes. that game it looked very serious but I tried to find something on it and I couldn't he, find anything he came back in yeah he Did got he? cleared to come back oh all yeah. right the, the worry about that hit was that Lazard had missed time because he had surgery on his core like he had the and he took a shot right to the middle of his body. Oh, my but, core! Yeah, exactly. But he, he was able to come back in. Uh, and the, the, the playoffs for the Green Bay Packers are so delightful that Alan Lazard, if, if he still is that guy that if, if you don't need to plug him in immediately, I think Lazard is a fantastic player to just have on your bench and watch for the next couple games and and see if those snap percentages get back up into the 80s. I, I think I think you can start him. I I do. I mean, he had six targets in in limited snaps and missed whatever chunk he did miss um in the game. Okay, so you're confident I, of just throwing him right back or throwing but, him in? Yeah, I mean, you're talking about Detroit as the next week. So I, I I would be willing to start Alan Lazard against Detroit. When I watched the game before that injury, he looked like the clear number 2 to me. Uh, a couple other rookies to talk about. I just want to bring them up because of target totals. I feel pretty much the same about them as I do uh, Gabriel Davis and Michael Pittman. And you guys can weigh in. Denzel Mims, it, you mm -hmm. guys know I loved him coming into the league. Loved I'm his ins. Your ends on Mims? Matt. I'm ends on Mims, man. It's three I'm straight games of eight targets. So so Denzel Mims, I know that there is, it's the Jets. It's There's a stink, stink, stunk about the New York Jets. But he has played five games as a professional in the NFL and he has seen seven or more targets in four of them like he, he, just his second game against the Kansas City Chiefs three targets but other than that seven eight 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 but not all targets are made the same I was gonna say the literal same thing as Jason I love Denzel Mims but uh, I would rather play Rashad Perryman uh, than Denzel Mims so if that tells me I don't want to play the number two Jets wide receiver Right, who might be the number three with with Crowder now? You know, now that Darnold is back, um, I like Mims a lot. I just don't like the situation. If you want to grab him, hoping that this is the week that you know they fire Adam Gase, because the week after Mims, I'm sure will catch fire. That's what players do when they're uh, freed of the bee hole. But um, I'm I'm guessing that he gets fired in the off season. They would have already let him go by oh. now if 
Yeah, he, I don't think he's getting fired. They're, he's part of the, their plan to not win games. The but, burn down plan. But three straight games of eight targets, three straight games of over 60 yards. I'm, I'm not saying he's coming in and he's a league winning type of a player, but he is, he, he's in a flex he's consideration. He he's won't score. He won't score any points. I, like he won't score touchdowns. I, that, that's the one thing that's a problem with that offense is they're, I mean, you're talking about Seattle's defense and then the Rams in, in Cleveland. Uh, Mike, though, you are in a situation. Let's say DJ Moore with his ankle knee right. misses a game. You're looking at all of these wide receiver options. Debo's not an option in our league. He's probably not an option in a highly competitive league. He's been picked up. So when when you bring up all of these names, and there's some others that we could talk about, Sammy Watkins made his way out onto the field again. Um, uh, Kiki QT brought him up earlier. You don't have uh, Kenny. Kenny Bills is gone. Will Fuller's gone. Randall Cobb is gone. Right. Corey uh, Davis, if he's out there. Corey Davis, if he's out there. All of these names and the ones we've named before, who are you targeting? Uh, who are you looking for a spot? If you're looking for a spot start. So I would, I would prioritize Kiki. Just based off of uh, there, there was there. I, look, I'm old enough to remember when there was hype for Kiki QT coming into a fantasy season, and his quarterback is great. So I, I would prioritize him. Then I would go Corey Davis, and I mean, then it comes in the third option would be is do I go Sammy Watkins or do I go uh, go with Denzel Mims and. So, so Mims is is up there for me, but Kiki would be the number one of those kind of remaining uh, remaining guys. Okay, I want to talk about some wide or uh, running back options here on the waiver wire. Are you dropping J.D. McKissick at this point, or are you holding on to him uh, in a James White esque kind of hope, where if you catch the Heinz game, if you catch the the passing game, McKissick will be the beneficiary there? Or are you moving on? I think you can move on. Uh, it it would depend. I he's not an uh, he's not an auto drop, but he is someone that if like there's a better option, McKissick or Frank Gore. I'd rather have Gore. I I'd rather have Frank Gore. I think I'd rather have McKissick. Uh, Gore is somebody we're going to talk about for sure momentarily. Uh, Daryl Henderson last four games the running back thirty eight twenty four fifty seven sixty one. The the ship has sailed on Daryl Henderson at, at this point. Are we are we moving on? Yeah, I mean it's. The, the the Rams are tough because Cam Akers looked looked fantastic. Cam Akers, you know, only nine opportunities, but turned into the running back fourteen on the week against San Francisco. Uh, so I at this point you got to start calling your shots for future games, and I would I'd rather have Akers at this point. Yeah, you expect that what he did on but the it's, field it's a crapshoot, man. Will get him more time because they the you know the. They weren't able to move the ball as a team. They were they were struggling a little bit, and then here comes – then they give it to Cam Akers. He busts off a 61-yard run. Then they let him try to get it into the end zone. He succeeds there. Had a really good game, so I, I would expect it to be even more of a timeshare, if not a flipped timeshare in Akers' favor. But I don't really think you can rely on either. I think both could be rostered, but I would not start either one. Agreed. There are, there are some uh, big additions to – the running back spot potentially if you need a start there are players that are out there let's talk about the one that you just brought up though and let's play a game I want to play a game <laughs> let's I play games yeah you might not when it's over uh, uh let's play a game called Frank Gore or Jonathan Taylor you want to play this oh, you want to play this game <laughs> I don't want to play this game. Oh, I am in. Uh, this yes. is going to be so selective from weeks, from from the bad weeks <laughs> on. Okay, go on. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's just go here. Uh, Frank Gore or Jonathan Taylor, uh, total snaps. Total snaps on the year. Who do you think has more snaps? <laughs> Frank, Frank Gore or Jonathan Taylor? I would guess Frank Gore. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. It's Jonathan Taylor. 310. Oh, the trap three, question. 310 to 290. And what about more touches on the year? I mean, Frank Gore, Jonathan Taylor. Who's got more touches? Jonathan JTT. Taylor. Yeah, this is a setup. Uh, 161 to 154 total touches. So, inevitably, more rushing yards. Who's got more rushing yards on the year? <laughs> 
Please be Jonathan Taylor. Please be Jonathan Taylor. <laughs> oh, it's not. 521 to 518. Frank Gore, more rushing yards than Jonathan Taylor. But, 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 let's let's temper that. More. Uh, who has more forced missed tackles on rushing attempts? Oh, my Who Paris, forces more no. missed tackles? I mean, you it no. has to. No. No. That's not. Oh, no. no. I'm going to go Frank Gore. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Frank Gore, 18. Jonathan Taylor, just 12 forced missed 12? tackles. And uh, here's your selective stat, Jason. But last four games played, fantasy points per game. Who's higher? Well, that one, I, I, I know it's Frank Gore. Yeah, it's Frank Gore. Uh, Frank Gore is facing uh, Las Vegas this week, who I believe is 29th in the league against the run. Yeah, then you- Seattle, Los Angeles, Cleveland, Last week, 18 for 74 on the ground. Last two weeks, RB11, RB18. Frank Gore is not special at all. We know that in terms of fantasy production, but he will be a 100% floor play for your team. You are not going to get burned starting Frank Gore this week where you, w- you could get burned with Latavius Murray, you could get burned with Damian Harris, you could get burned with James White, who, by the way, caught like no passes, oh, just yeah. happened to, to run the ball into the end zone twice. So I agree that you won't get burned, but it's going to take the touchdown. But to... it's not going to cook your meal either. Right, exactly. <laughs> that, well said, Mike. It's not going to burn it. It's not going to cook oh. it. Oh, and it, I would rather you cook know, your meal against Las Vegas this week. Eighteen carries. Look, I'm, I'm in, man. I'm, I'm Frank Gore is in play for. He's me in this my week. one of my lineups because I just need points. I need. All right, okay. Let's I do need this. Ten point. I need ten points. Let's do a water bet for this week. Jonathan Taylor, Frank Gore. What is the matchup for Indianapolis? <laughs> <laughs> what, what was, was that? that? What was that for? <laughs> Al, what? I may have double tapped a button trying to get to the oh. water bet. I, oh. I, I heard a water bet coming, and I was trying to get prepped. Good <laughs> job, Al. Oh uh, my god! No, he plays. I was trying to make the connection. Like, who's who is? <laughs> the Indianapolis Colts um, play against the Houston Texans. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah! Make the bet, Andy. That's Johnny Taylor's season. That's tough because uh, touchdown probability bet. seems higher for. Jonathan Taylor, but I'll make the bet because it's right. yeah, it's entertainment. Water bet. I would have done anything for the fifty-five right there. I was hoping he hit it again. <laughs> I know the the problem with this bet is that we're saying you could go get Frank Gore right now off of the waiver wire. Jonathan Taylor's not on your waiver wire. Exactly, exactly. Frank Gore is the top of the list for me. I know that some people probably want to roll Latavius out there. Uh, that's fine. I I, I don't think you're going to get. I mean, he's he's a floor play too, right? I mean, he's going to have opportunities against. Yes. Yeah, he he will against Atlanta. Uh, those two guys are, I, I think they have to be near the top of the list. If you need somebody right now, uh, Benny Snell. I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll get to see on Wednesday how much Benny Snell is involved with James Conner on the COVID list. We don't know how long that James Conner is going to be there. Uh, I think Snell is a must add if he's out there. He's, oh, yeah. he's a must add because we're in that time of year that you need to have these backups on on the bench in case a starter misses time like James Conner. Well, Conner's not going to play next week either, right? I mean, Monday night it Maybe, seems improbable. It, it moved to Tuesday. I don't so 10 days is the day and and I No, they're that, they're Monday. They're Monday. The oh, the Ravens game got moved to Tuesday, but the Steelers are moved from Sunday to Monday. I don't know exactly what day he went on. Okay. Uh or tested positive, but it, it's it is I think it's possible Conner could be back next week. But the, Snell, the, Snell would be the highest add if we knew he was starting next week, though, right? Uh, yeah, maybe. I, I, over I, Gore, over anybody else. I mean, he it, maybe it's we, Buffalo, we, Buffalo what, next Monday. Yeah, what yes, I'm saying I would, is, I would grab Snell. We we don't know. We'll we'll find out. You know, tomorrow, how much does Anthony McFarland actually get to play the the rookie running back who is explosive? Benny Snell is not explosive, but the the player I want to highlight here who. He's available in about half of ESPN leagues, a little bit less on Yahoo. But J.K. Dobbins is on some waiver wires, and it we it, it looked like the transformation had happened a couple weeks ago. I know in in, in NFL and football time and fantasy football time, that's ages ago. 
But J.K. Dobbins was the leader the last time we saw the Baltimore Ravens, leader of the backfield, and the schedule for them, if they actually make that transition, which anyone who's watched the team, they would say, yeah, you should move over to J.K. Dobbins being the primary runner. Dallas next week, and in the playoffs, Cleveland, Jacksonville, and the Giants. Dobbins could be a guy who turns into a playoff superstar. Yeah, if they commit to one back, yes, that would they be, have to, yeah, that if would they be pretty huge. Him. Yeah. Um and then, you know, the two Patriots running backs, if you really if you want to get like real nervous yeah. in your in your uh, uh GI area, the Damian Harris, <laughs> J- James White, they I'm, both I'm, seem real sketch. I yeah, would take I'm out. I would take James White out of those two. Yeah. Uh, I agree that they're both a little sketchy, but I would take Harris. Near the goal line, you know, you saw it with Rex Burkhead and James White has that role. And even though he only had one target this past week, you know that James White I mean, he's had games even with Cam where he's involved in the passing game. They set up those great screens that go for 30, 40 yards. Uh James White would be the one because of the PPR baseline. And I think ironically the the, the touchdown upside over Harris. Um but one other name that, that I would bring up, I know we Talked about good news with Josh Jacobs, um, but Devonte Booker. Yes, is if Josh Jacobs were to be out of the game, which is still in play. If he goes out there, he's testing his ankle. His ankle isn't right. They're hopeful he's he's here. But if he's out, Devonte Booker, who has been pretty good, been very good, gets to play against the Jets as the you know only show in town for the Ra- for the Raiders. I would I would certainly be taking a shot on Booker for the upside. Yeah, we we will learn a lot with like the Benny Snell situation and some of these injuries. There there are a number of players that are in that category of you should put them on your bench because what if something happens? Uh, Snell has like kind of the double effect there because Connor is injury prone, is already on the COVID list. Snell should be on rosters. Tony Pollard should be on rosters. Uh, Jamal Williams should be on yes. rosters. Jamal Williams, I mean, it, it's that's going to feel – Speaking of uh, an irritated GI tracks, like I think Jamal <laughs> Williams might be, he might just be a flex player moving forward. And so he would have more value than than Tony Pollard at this point. Yeah, it is possible. And there was to the Snell confidence. We'll see it on the field tomorrow. But yeah, uh, there were talks about getting him more involved from the team, saying yes. he deserves more carries ahead of the injury. So. He will have an opportunity. McFarland is not a player I think that they would make any sort of bell cow, uh, but it will be interesting to see the breakdown. That will be one of many things we're watching on the field tomorrow night, and I do think the game will happen, so that will be good for the NFL schedule if it can happen. Uh, anything else at the running back position we should touch on? Do you do you look at Boston Scott with his snap counts going up or just ignore him because what's I mean, the upside? Yeah, yeah, that's that's where I am. I'm I'm ignoring him. His upside it would be only in the case of an injury, and then you still worry about the offense. Um, Alexander Madison, I'd throw him out there with the Tony Pollards and the the guys that just should be. This is the time of year where yes, you don't want them sitting on waiver wires. All right, guys, I need you to do me a favor. It's a simple favor. It's easy. Uh, it helps everybody, and uh, the Foot Clan needs it. So I need you to just conveniently. Offer up a league-winning tight end in our waiver show. <laughs> uh, tight end position, easy to find yeah. talent, easy to find consistency, so this should not be a challenge for you. Okay. Well, guys who are available, it, I, it was a disappointment this past week, but Jordan Reed ran 25 routes. He was the primary tight end and six targets. Like It's hard to find a tight end that's going to see that on a regular basis. Granted, last week really sucked, so I'm 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 not out on Jordan Reed yet. Uh, Robert um, Tunyon is a, what was that, Jay? I, I I'm I'm the same. I I I didn't want to say it because obviously I told people I will up say last it. week, and he was my start of the week, and it, it was a complete and utter failure. But I'm not off of Jordan Reed. You you've got to, you know, we, we know this with fantasy football. Every player has good games and bad games and and you know if if he had been hit across the middle that one time he would have been yes. sadly fine um when i look at the names of everybody out there um you know logan logan thomas had a good game but he's got pittsburgh coming up it would basically be jordan reed robert tunyon and and uh trey burton but and there's, and there's reasons to hate the, all of them this the speculative ad i'm with andy that jordan akins 
you could you could put them on your bench and see what happens to I, the target share. Yeah, I, I put them in a different order. I don't have that level of confidence in Jordan Reed because of the snaps Dwelly gets, and and he he ran ten routes. It, I would go Tunyon far and away number one on this list. Tunyon has the, uh, you know, Jordan Reed leans on Mullins. There's a reason I know we say if he got hit across the middle, he would have had a good game. Right. We're we're going to say that type of thing, unfortunately. Due to, uh, you know, this would be like saying prescribing Richard Rodgers to people. I think it would be a little bit troubling due to the quarterback. Tunyon is getting deep shots every single game. Doesn't always connect, but I love that. I love the weak winning ability of that type of play. He would be number one if he's not rostered to me. And then the, all the rest are kind of in the same category. I do think Aikens is the clear number one on that uh, pass catching list for Watson, but that is not somebody that... Look, if you do, if you have no confidence there, I don't blame you. He hasn't done it yet, so uh, I think it's Tunyon. Then I'd probably go Reed. I guess I'm with you guys there, and then it's Burton, Aikens, and everybody else. Yeah, yeah, I, I I'm totally fine with that. All right, what are some defensive options for this upcoming week and the future? This is the time of year where if you don't have you know, like I have in League of Record, the Steelers who are just locked mm, in and I'm just going to play them every nice. week. Yeah. Uh, this is the time of year where I'm loading up my bench, right? If, if, if you have, if you're set up, this is the time of year where I've got two two defenses on my bench potentially setting up my playoff weeks. Who do you like this week and moving forward? Yeah, Ooh. you. It, I mean, there's, there's a lot of good options. Uh, the Bears are out there in about half of leagues right now because of their bad matchup this last week. Going forward, they've got Detroit, and then Houston. We'll we'll have a week to see what happens with Deshaun Watson without Fuller, um, to see if maybe you would start him there. But the nice thing is, whenever you can find a a defense that is actually good mm -hmm. in a good matchup, that's that's the best case situation because then you look at longevity of being able to play them a future week. For instance, we've talked a lot about the Seahawks. I would pick them up. I'd play them. They've got a good schedule, but but the Seahawks are not as talented as the as the Bears on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, I'm I'm with you, Jay. That the the Bears are at the top of my list. Uh, the and then it's probably the the Seahawks next, but maybe maybe even the I would consider the 49ers. Uh, I know that the matchup against Josh Allen always that's not necessarily what you want to attack, but the 49ers defense they're they are a good defense. They they can get things done. Yeah, Buffalo this week, and then in the playoffs, Washington and Dallas are their first two Those two are matches. great, and they're yeah, getting the, healthier with Sherman back. Yeah, yeah, the 49ers are definitely a defense that I am looking to acquire, but not for this week. They, I, I, don't, I wouldn't want to play them against Buffalo, but I am actively picking them up. I've already picked them up in one of my leagues because of the Washington and Dallas, and, and I expect them to be a very good defense. And the fact that they won against the Rams means that they are playing for something. It's right. they're they're still in the playoff hunt, which is also good news for George Kittle. Uh, throw that name out there as the weeks go on. I don't remember what week he is eligible to come back, but he would only come back I think if they're in a playoff hunt and maybe you've, you know, you you sneak into that semifinals or the championship with a bad tight end. I'm not I'm not diametrically opposed to playing them against Buffalo this week either. This offense, uh, unfortunately, without John Brown, has not been as prolific Agreed. Uh, week to week. I mean, they don't have a great running game. They don't have options outside of digs. This past week wasn't that uh, spectacular, so I'm not opposed to it. Cardinals have a very nice uh, fantasy playoffs of the Giants, Philadelphia, and San Francisco. Mm -hmm. There's a chance you're literally facing backup quarterbacks in all three of those games. If, if Daniel Jones doesn't make it back by week 14 – uh, he's kind of a backup of, in his own right. And then <laughs> the Eagles could have moved on to Hurts at that point or else you're getting Wentz and then Mullins. So somewhat interesting. They're, play, they're a playmaking defense. You see Isaiah Simmons getting more work on that defense too. There's a chance you get some big plays from them. Kind of interesting. So uh, another team you could look at. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. I think that the Cardinals are a – very good option um for the for the fantasy playoffs and the the fact that they've been uh kind of struggling on offense sometimes that can actually help the defense step up all right anybody else you want to bring up here mm, nope all right who, who play who plays the eagles that's <laughs> <laughs> uh, just throwing that out there because uh they're looking very bad yeah, yeah. no doubt 
full stream ahead. All right, uh, everybody, I want you to take your mouse or your, your trackpad, and I want you to go click on Derek Carr. <laughs> and uh, do you have it up on your screen? And then everybody, on the count of three, I want you to drop him. Mm. One, two, three. Whee! Dropped. Dropped. So, um, and I know it's not, you know, it's not as strategic as kind of doing the waiver wire exchange, but it feels better to just let him go right now and then sign a new streaming quarterback. So, ah, man, I cannot imagine the the anguish inside of you right now, Andy, having having to do all of this with Derek Carr. Yeah, I mean, this is a it's a trust it's a trust situation here. I mean, the head coach He's broken had to your apologize. Trust, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you you go out on a limb for a guy who's having a statistically pretty good year, and he he's going to destroy the Jets, and we all know that. Do not play him, but know that he's going that it's going to happen. He's going to have a great week against the Jets. I I just thought that that face he made at the end of the Chiefs game meant something, and it clearly it did. It meant watch watch what's going to happen. Look, that's right. the same face I make when I got a poop, man. Yeah, maybe that's all it was. Maybe it was some bad uh, Chipotle, uh, Mike. Streaming yes. quarterback option for week 13. I'm going with Kirk Cousins. The matchup against the Jacksonville Jaguars is not scary in the slightest. And Kirk Cousins has been a He's pretty been good, scintillating. He has been a pretty good quarterback. The, the Vikings, I mean, what's wild is the Vikings won one. They won one game in the first six weeks. That was it. Like they looked like a dumpster fire of a team, and since then they have crawled back into the wild card competition. And a lot of that has to do with the uh, the way that the offense is playing with Dalvin Cook and Kirk Cousins, who is the quarterback twelve right now and on Justin the Jefferson. year. And just yeah, Justin Jefferson. Uh, it, I mean, he got it done. Kirk got it done last week without Adam Thielen. He was the QB three on the week, throwing three hundred and three against the Carolina Panthers. Gets the Jags. I mean, he Cousins. Cousins is like the the streaming guy. Where he, he, usually he has a good game. Sometimes he has you know some bad games. That's why he's not just a weekly start and he's more of a streamer. But this this is a a good week and this would make he is on fire. NBA Jam rules say that Kirk Cousins is on fire right now. When you have elite wide receiving options like he has, and uh, you know they they're well coached. They they're a team. After that start that has turned it around, the defense is not great, but they've figured some things out. It seems like that's the identifier of a good or a well-coached team. And is, Kirk is good. I, I stand always for Kirk Cousins. I think he's a good quarterback. Oh, great. Yes, you do stand always for him. Just, yes. just hopefully he doesn't Derek Carr you this week. No, I he, like Cousins he won't, in the office. because he's I know. Kirk Cousins. It kind of reminds me of old school Phillip Rivers in terms sure. of fa- in terms of fantasy where it was like, you know, you you more often than not, he gave you a good game. When you saw him opposing you in fantasy, you were like, oh, cool, I get to play Kirk Cousins. Oh, cool, I get to play Phillip Rivers. And then they'd have their big game against you. So mm-hmm. uh, it, it's a good name to bring up. And you're right, they're five and six now. They're, they're uh, above the Bears in that division. Uh, what a turnaround. Yeah, that's crazy. I uh, uh, Look, for my streaming quarterback of the week, I'm going to take a shot. On Ryan Fitzpatrick being the oh, starting yes. quarterback this I week against it. Cincinnati, if he is out there as the quarterback, then uh, I you have what I believe is a locked and loaded quarterback one. It's a great matchup, and pretty much the entire year while he while Ryan Fitzpatrick's been the starter, he was a quarterback one. You know when he was a starter weeks two through five, quarterback one every single week. Comes back this last week quarterback one he was the quarterback seven he's just been really really great now there's a chance to a place when the injury first happened it was said that Tua could miss multiple weeks and I'm going to take the shot I, I would I would be willing to take Fitzpatrick knowing I might have to pivot later in the week but I, I would pick him up because I I think the upside is there in a matchup against Cincinnati and I'm going to go with Ryan Tannehill uh you know he had a bit of a four game stretch where he was not spectacular didn't do a lot for fantasy players and then you're like well he gets to play in Baltimore and in Indianapolis those are going to be tough matchups and yet he delivered top 10 fantasy weeks in both of them this week he gets a matchup against Cleveland that is in the bottom third against opposing fantasy wide receiver or quarterbacks 
And the nice thing about Tannehill is he is one tank wide receiver away from a, a big play at any moment. Uh, you know, and AJ Brown is just incredible. Big play potential at any at any moment in, in time. So I, I like Tannehill to make it a three straight top 10 finish week. If Tannehill week. is out there, he must be picked up. I, I, I would play him over if it's if they're if it's magic is active and playing and Tannehill is obviously active and playing. I, I would I would play Tannehill. All right. And uh I think that's gonna do it. Now there are some different waiver situations out there this week, right? Mm-hmm. Some leagues are processing waivers uh, Friday morning or Thursday morning after this Wednesday night game. Do we know uh, if that's going to have any implications on these leagues? Are we going to need to follow up here with the waivers? I would just say make sure you are checking in on your league. Pay attention. Know what is going to happen. Looks like Yahoo is processing uh, waivers and trades Friday morning instead of uh, the normal week, Wednesday. Just, Just be aware of what's happening. Yeah, and, and if you're listening to the show, the only thing that's going to change from now to then, other than the Wednesday night game, will just be breaking news, and we'll we'll cover that on, on every episode. All right, we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the podcast. The DeAndre Swift signed jersey, $78 yesterday, one of their hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. We always bring you uh, uh, some of the more interesting names. There's a lot of fantasy players out there, and you can use our code BALLERS at pristineauction.com to get a $10 credit. If you're browsing for a difference-making gift, right? Mm -hmm. This is where you look. There are some pretty amazing deals at pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Like I said, that'll do it. Tomorrow, we've got some mailbag. We've got some buy sale. And uh, goodness, we'll have a Wednesday night football game. So 2020 continues. Oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) WednesdayAfternoonFootball.com? Dot com, yes. All right. Thank you for listening. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.